Hi, I'm Sid from Northern Soul Yoga. Uh, I'm a yoga teacher and a climber, and I'm here to take you through a flow with a focus on hip openers. So this isn't gonna be a pre-session flow, because obviously we're gonna be doing a lot of hip openers, so we might lose a little bit of stability there if you're gonna move onto the wall, but this is a great session afterwards, or if you're already warm and just looking to open up that area. Okay, so we're gonna start off in a child's pose, which is a resting posture. A little bit of a hip opener here. So we've got the big toes together. The knees are sitting at about mat width distance apart. And we've got some space in front of us. So we're just gonna to start to walk the hands forward, stretch the fingers to the top of the mat and let the forehead come down towards the floor. If your bum is not reaching your heels, you can take a pillow. In this case, I've got a foam roller, which is a little bit too high, but you can rest your bum there and bring yourself down. And that's a little bit less intense on the knees as well. So once your forehead's on the floor, think about pushing your weight back towards your heels. So there's a little bit of pressure on the palms. The shoulders are ever so slightly turned on just so that we can start to send our weight back. And just let your belly be soft here. And just take a few deep breaths. Breathing through the nose rather than the mouth. Close the eyes, relax the facial features, unclench the jaw. I'm taking a few moments here just to ground down, settle onto your mat or settle onto the floor. And if you want, you can give your forehead a little roll just from side to side. And think of this as though you're ironing out the creases, the lines in the forehead. Just melting away a little bit of tension. Option to sway a little bit into the torso and into the hips. So you're just seeing how you feel today here on the mat. Maybe the hips starting to open a little bit more. Cool. Let's come back to center. Keep the forehead down and just start to walk your hands to the right side of the mat. Stack the left palm on top of the right. Gentle interlace of the fingers. And we're still sending that weight back. Nice deep stretch up the side of the body into the lats, the outer shoulder. Breathing deeply here again, just at your own pace. And then release, and we'll just take it over to the other side. Right palm stacks this time, send the weight back. Notice if there's a difference between the left and the right side. Just observing that. Beautiful, okay, let's come back through center now with the hands. And we'll just start to peel the forehead away from the floor. And then as you start to gaze forward, rock up. And we'll just come here onto all fours for our tabletop. We'll do a little bit of movement again into the spine. So if you've done the warm up flow already, you'll be familiar with this cat cow movement. So palms spread, drop the belly, lift the chest, lift the gaze. So we're stretching out the throat. And then reverse this by rounding the spine, hollowing out the shoulders. And again, use your breath as your guide. You can inhale to raise the gaze up and then exhale to push the floor away. So we're linking the movement with the breath. And what that does is it helps to build a sense of flow here into the body and starting to build the heat from the inside out. So you might feel yourself just starting to warm up a little bit more as you move with that breath. Okay. Let's come back into a neutral spine now. And we'll start to bring a little bit more focus into the hips. So we're gonna start by lifting the right leg off the floor. 90 degree bend at the knee. It's almost like you're pushing that foot towards the ceiling. 
So we'll start to circle into the hip here. So keep the foot flexed, draw the knee towards the chest, squeezing the glute as we open that hip back out. That's one circle. Squeeze it in, squeeze the glute for two. And then we'll go for three. Beautiful. Okay, let's take it the other way now. So we opened it out. Now we'll roll it forwards. So same big circles, but we're moving in the opposite direction. Try and keep your core strong and the weight equal between the hands. Once you've done three circles, take that leg out behind you, squeezing the glute and just roll into the ankle a little bit. Release any cracks, any pops, and then we'll drop the knee down. Beautiful. Okay, let's take it on the other side now. So left leg, flex the foot, almost like you're pushing away the ceiling, a little bit of engagement into the glute. We'll bring the knee into the chest. Whoop, isolating that movement in the hip as we bring it round. Going for two, big squeeze of the glute. Don't worry if your hip cracks, it's totally fine. And three, cool, let's take it the other way. Equal weight in the palms. Keep the head steady here. We're just moving into the hip, bringing that focus in. Beautiful. At the end of that third circle, we'll take the leg out behind, squeeze the bum, and just take a couple of rotations here into the ankle, just to release the joints. Beautiful. Okay, let's drop the knee down. Little movement of the hips and shoulders. So thinking S shape here, side to side, almost like you're squeezing the side of the body. This is just gonna help to neutralize the spine. Okay. Let's tuck the toes underneath at the back of the mat now. Gently finding downward dog. So lift the knees, lift the hips. Press the chest towards the thighs. Focusing more on alignment with the back than having perfectly straight legs. So release tension around the shoulders, looking for that external rotation of the shoulder blades. And you can just take a little pedal into the legs, ease the calves and the hamstrings. Maybe sway your hips slightly, taking it into the intercostals, maybe even the outer shoulder if we are particularly stiff there today. Beautiful. Okay. Find stillness with the legs. Walk your hands in here. Once we get to the back of the mat, soften the knees, chin to chest on your inhale. We'll slowly uncurl the spine. Bring your palms together overhead. And then exhale, hands are gonna come down into heart center. Okay, so take a look at your feet. They're probably sitting at hip width apart now. We're just gonna bring them a little bit closer. So we're zipping up through the legs, squeeze the knees, squeeze the ankles, squeeze the inner thighs. Let's take a side body opener, but it's also gonna work a little bit into the outer edge of the hip. So take your arms together overhead, interlace your palms, leave your index, leave your index finger pointing out. Squeeze the biceps together behind the ears. Legs are active. Hips stay where they are and just start to lean towards the right side. So imagine your bottom arm is pulling your top arm as you reach overhead, getting that beautiful side body opener. Look forwards or to the ceiling, a little bit more balance required. And then gently raise your way back up. Take an inhale to extend. Exhale, we'll take it the other way. Make sure your legs stay active. Beautiful opening into the spine here as well. Look forwards or to the ceiling, stay strong through your legs. And then gently raise your way back up. Beautiful. Let's release the hands now. We'll bring the feet back to hip width distance apart. So before we take some passive opening into the hips, we're gonna build a little bit of stability around the joints. So when we're climbing, we're using active flexibility rather than passive flexibility. So we wanna make sure that we've got that strength there. Take both hands onto the hips, spread the toes of the right foot on the floor, and then just lean to the right here. What we're looking for is not dipping the hip and letting the 
glute move out to the side. We want to keep everything stable. So eyes, eyes of the hips, hip bones pointing forwards. So take the weight to the right foot, left knee is lifting up to 90 degrees. Keep the toe flexed in front of you. Let's match this with the right arm, extending forwards. And then we're coming into a warrior three. So thinking of a T shape with the body, lean forwards, offer a bit of softness in your standing leg and start to tap your fingertips down to the floor. Lovely, keep the arms straight. Let's work our way back up. Knee comes into the chest and then we'll do this again. A little bit slower this time. The standing leg stays soft, so we're not locking out the knee. Gently raise it. Back up. Beautiful. Let's swap hands for the third side. Right hand, right hip. Left arm extends forward. Let's take it down. This time you might want to hold it just for a little bit longer. See if you can pause here. Option to make it a little bit harder is to take both hands onto the hips and keep that stability there. So a little bit of wobbling is fine in the ankle, in the knee. Cool. Let's bring ourselves back up. This time interlace your hands around the front of the left knee. Let's just draw the knee into the chest. A little bit of compression for the hip flexor just to squeeze. And then when we release that leg back down, rush of blood comes into this area, improving circulation. Let's take it on the other side. So hands on at the hips. We know what to expect this time. So spread the toes of the left foot. Take your weight onto this foot. Notice if the hip rolls out or can we keep it forwards. Take that right knee in towards the chest. Find your balance point and then right arm is extending forward to match. Let's start to bring it down into that little warrior three transition. So keep the chest lifted, right leg extends back, little tap of the fingers, and then coming all the way back up to squeeze that knee in. So we're building stability here around the hips before we start to open them up later. A Little bit of heat coming in here as well. Okay, for that third one, we're going to swap hands. Right hand, right hip, left arm extends forward, soften into your knee, and we're going to try and hold it this time. So as you come down, make sure your back toes are flexed towards the floor, belly button drawn in. You can stay here or take both hands onto the hips. Look for a little bit more balance here. Make sure that right hip isn't peeling up, hip bone pointing down. Lovely, let's take it all the way back up. Nice smooth transition to take that knee into the chest. So you might be getting a little bit of fatigue in your standing leg now, maybe in the calf. And then on your next exhale, let's just release that right leg back down. Cool. Feet sitting now about mat width distance apart. Let's just take a figure of eight movement here to ease into those hips. Beautiful. Okay, bring the feet back to hip width apart. Let the arms just rest beside the body. We came up with a roll, so let's come back down with a roll. Start by dropping your chin to your chest and then roll into the shoulders. And we're on rolling here. Just soften the knees once you reach that halfway point. Take hold of opposite elbows, let the head hang heavy. Ragdoll style here as we just sway from side to side. Nice and gentle, keeping the joints soft. Awesome. Okay, let's come into a downward dog again. So feet stay grounded. This time just a little walk forward with your hands towards the top of the mat. Beautiful. Okay, let's take the right leg up to the ceiling. Toes flex to the floor. A little bit of activation in the glute. This is called a three-legged dog. We'll start to bend into the right knee now. And as you roll forward, step the right foot to the outer edge of the right hand. If it doesn't quite make it there, you can use your right hand to bring it forwards or hop it forwards. Shuffle the left foot back a little bit here. And we're easing into a lizard lunge. So look to have your shin vertical, knee stacked over the ankle. Let's just take a bit of movement here for a moment. So rocking forwards and back on your left foot, 
seeing how you feel into the hips today. You can take quite a lot of weight away from the hips just by pushing away from the floor. Once we've done a couple of those rocks, take your back knee down and untuck the toe. At this point, we're starting to relax into the hips a little bit more. So we're getting length through the front of the left hip and a little bit of compression in the front of the right hip, same as we did when we were standing for that balance earlier on. If this feels okay for you, and this is enough stretch, you're gonna stay on the hands. If you wanna come a little bit deeper, you're slightly more open. Option is to drop the elbows all the way down to the floor. If you're somewhere in between, I'm gonna grab my roller again. You can use a pillow, whatever you want, and come into that halfway point. Just let the head drop here, relax into the neck. And we're breathing into this newfound space in the hips. If you're someone that struggles to sit in a stretch or you want to add a little bit of movement, you can opt just to sway slightly from side to side, easing into that space a little bit more. If you're really open, back toes can tuck and you can float that left knee as well. But be aware, you can always drop it down if it's too much. Use the longer breaths. And every time you exhale, the exhale is gonna help you to ease into the stretch. So think of that breath out as releasing tension. So perhaps you can unclench the fists, unclench the jaw, and use that breath out to sink. Okay. Let's peel our way back up onto the palms. This time we're adjusting the angle of the front foot. So instead of the toes pointing forward, spin the foot at a 45 degree angle. Naturally here, we're gonna wanna peel onto the outer edge of the foot. So just let the sole of the foot lift from the floor and we notice that sensation has moved into the outer edge of the hip. Again, you can pause here, maybe sway a little bit, or assist by placing your right hand on the inner thigh and very gently just pushing to the point that suits you. Open the chest if you've gone for this option. Right shoulder blade drawn in, a little bit of a gaze over the shoulder. I'm gonna give another option here if you're quite open in the hips and you wanna also bring that focus into the chest, you can reach your right hand back, bend into your left knee and take the outer edge of the foot. And then again, you have the control if you wanna take that in and that's gonna release into the quadricep as well. Know your limits though, just take your time. You can always reel it back. Okay, let's drop the right hand down, spin the toes forwards, and we're gonna step back into that high plank. So tuck your left toes, lift the knee, right foot comes back to meet the left. Okay, from here, drop your knees to the mat, bend the elbows, lower your belly all the way down. Untuck the toes, we're gonna go for a gentle back bend, baby cobra. So no weight on the hands, lift your chest, squeeze the elbows together nice and strong. And then on your exhale, we'll come down. Tuck your toes, press the hips back to the heels. Brief moment in a child's pose to lengthen the spine. And then we'll make our way back up into that downward dog. So raise your hips, sink the heels, press the weight back to the thighs. Beautiful. Okay, let's take the left heel nice and high this time, looking for three-legged dogs. So flex the toes, nice active position, and then we'll start to bend the knee as you roll forward, guiding that left foot outside the hand. Remember, you can assist if needed. Wiggle the right toes back a little bit. Once we found that length and stride, we'll start to take those rocks forwards and back. Again, nice stretch for the sole of the foot for the calf, for the Achilles. And we're just playing around, seeing how we feel on this side. We've all got one side that's slightly stiffer than the other. So we're trying to create that balance, that harmony in the body. Okay. Once we've had some play around, playing around here, drop the knee, untuck the toes. And again, just start to relax into the hips a little bit. So releasing a tiny bit of weight from the hands and just sinking into the hips, seeing how you feel today. 
Again, option is just to stay up on the hands if that works for you. Or you can come down to that halfway point on a block, on a roller, on a pillow, or we're coming all the way to the floor if you're quite open in this area today. Again, just relax into the head. And you can take those sways if you like. Option is stay in stillness as well. If you wanna pause the video and hang out here for a bit longer, you're more than welcome to do that as well. And just pinpoint here where you feel this the most in the hips. Is it the right hip? Is it the left hip? And that's a bit of an indication where we hold the most stiffness. If you find that you're sitting a lot all day, most likely the tension is gonna be here in the outside edge, which we'll feel more in the next stretch. If you're walking a lot, it's gonna be more in the front of the hip and the tendons here. Okay. Beautiful, let's start to take it back up onto the hands now. Whatever assist that you've used, you can just pop it to one side. Let's adjust the angle of the front foot again. So looking for that 45 degree rotation. As you peel the foot up and roll onto the outer edge, you can stay here with the hand on the floor or the gentle assist is to gently press and then open the chest. Think about it as if you're trying to roll the flesh of the thigh outwards. So if you were to grip here and roll out, that's gonna help with the rotation of the hip as we draw the shoulder back from the ear. Again, just an option if you're looking for that deeper variation. Back leg can bend, you can draw it in and you get that nice opening across the pectoral muscle as well. Check in with the breath. Are we holding it in the chest or is it flowing freely? Beautiful. Okay, let's release. We'll come back to the front of the mat. Spin the toes forward. Step back into your plank again. So back knee lifts first. Left foot comes to meet the right. Let's again drop the knees. Untuck the toes. Elbows squeeze into the rib cage as we lower down. Back bending again. You can take that baby cobra, same as last time. If you have discomfort in your lower back, just stick with this variation. Otherwise, high cobra, a little bit of a deeper back bend, weight on the palms, shoulder blades slide down the back as we lift the chest forwards. Beautiful. Let's come here, down to the floor. We'll take it either back into that child's pose that we found earlier on, or I'm gonna give an option for a frog here. So if the hips are feeling a bit tighter already, you can stay in that child's pose. Otherwise, come onto the elbows, turn your feet out to the side, and you're just gonna start to ease into a stretch across the groin. So things to look out for here, one of them is leaning too far forwards and one of them is leaning too far back. So ideally you want your hips to be in line with your knees. I've got some markings on the floor here that can help, but just take a little check. Notice if we're in the right place. So if you have tightness across the groin, again, this is really gonna come to the surface here. Try and slow down the breath, not clench, not resist too much. Easier said than done in these stretches. If you're quite open, you can create a pillow with the hands, maybe come down or walk the hands out in front and the forehead can touch the floor. Again, if you want to stay here for longer, you can pause the video and stay for as long as you'd like. You can take some little rocks very gently here as well, if that feels okay. And it's not the most graceful posture to get out of if you're in this frog. So let's come up onto the elbows. Big toes are together. Press away from the floor to bring space for the knees. Okay, let's sit back onto the heels. Let's wrap the arms around the body for a moment. Like we're wiggling the fingers together on the back. And just drop your head. So the scapula drawing away from each other here. And then as we release, 
little cactus of the arms, 90 degree bend, lift through your chest, open your heart space, and then just drop it down. Cool. Okay, so we'll just take the legs to one side now. Come onto the bum and just shuffle a little bit further forwards on the mat. Take this opportunity just to wiggle into the knees and release the back of the legs. Okay, so take a bend into your knees here. Feet are sitting about hip width distance apart. We're gonna drop both knees to the left. Just keep the weight on the hands, see how that feels. Come back through center and then take the knees to the other side. So we're just releasing here around the joints, freeing up a little bit of movement. So we're keeping the weight on the hands for now, just so we can focus on that hip movement. If you feel you can do this without keeping the weight on the hands, it's a little bit harder. Naturally, we are gonna wanna lean back and away from the hips, but just see how that feels. The next level up is as you drop the knees, can you bring the hips forward? Drop it down, take it the other way, and then lift up. So we'll just do this a couple of times. <laughs> Easing into the hips. Okay, cool. Let's come back through center. And we'll just keep the feet at about hip width distance apart. A little bit of a gap between your feet and the groin. Reach the arms forward and then just very slowly we'll start to unravel the spine coming down onto the mat. Let's walk the legs forward, arms reach behind, take a nice deep full body stretch. You can interlace the fingers if you want. And then just gently on an exhale, bend into the knees, little squeeze as you hug them in. Okay, drop the feet back down to the floor. Let's cross the right ankle over the left knee. So this is a reclined pigeon pose. You may be familiar with a regular pigeon posture where you're on the elbows and the leg is across the mat. This just gives a bit more control and it's not quite as intense around the knee joint. So with that right ankle hooked, we're gonna take the hands on an interlace, either behind the left thigh or on the front of the shin. It's just personal preference. Soften into the right hip, draw that left leg a little bit closer in, and then just close the eyes here. And like I said before, you have the control of how deep that you wanna take this. So the closer that that leg is gonna come in towards the chest, the deeper that will find that stretch in the right hip. Try and keep your lower back on the floor where you don't want to raise it up because that's just going to take away from the stretch. So there's a bit more space in the hips already. And we're just breathing into that a little bit more. Okay. Keep the ankle hooked over the knee. Release the left leg and just let the foot drop back down onto the mat. From here, we're gonna open up the arms into a T-shape. Lift your bum away from the floor and take the hips to the right side of the mat. So naturally here, the legs are starting to lean to the left. So we're just gonna go with this. Dropping both knees to the left. And then just look to the right hand. So we still have that hip opener on the right leg, same leg that we had the reclined pigeon with. But we get the benefits of a spinal twist here as well. So wringing out tension, stiffness from the spine as we slow things down. On your next exhale, we'll gently bring the legs back up. Use the hand to assist if you need. And then we'll just uncross that right ankle. Okay, taking this on the other side now, left ankle hooking just around the right knee, a little bit lower on the thigh. Interlace around the right thigh or the shin. It's totally up to you. And we're gonna go for that reclined pigeon again on the other side. 
So again, this is going to address any imbalances that we have. For me, my left hip is a lot tighter than the right. And it does actually impact the way that I walk, the way I stand. So I'm looking for a bit more release on this side. But this does mean because it's tighter, I can't quite take the leg in as close. So just listening to your body, if it hurts, if we're scrunching the face, we've gone a little bit too far. Use that breath, that exhale to relax into the pose. Okay, so releasing that right leg, keep the cross of the ankle, arms are opening up into a tr into a T-shape. Lift the hips, take them to the left, and we're looking here for our twisted root pose as the knees come to the right. You can gaze towards the left hand, maybe close the eyes. Again, another option is to place your right hand on the top leg, and this just allows a bit more depth a little bit more weight. We're not pressing or forcing, it's just simply using the weight of the hand. Soften into the belly. And to release, either assisting with the hands or just lifting those knees back up. Uncross the leg, re-center the hips. And then as you draw the knees into the chest this time, we're gonna separate out the legs and just draw some individual circles here. So moving the knees apart and then together, just oiling into the hinges here of those hips that we've released and then take these circles in the opposite direction. Cool. Okay. So a little final posture here. We're coming into a relaxation. So you can either fully outstretch the legs, keeping a bit of distance between the feet, or if you're still looking for a hip opener, we're taking a reclined butterfly. So soles of the feet are together knees just dropping away from each other and then just let the arms fall beside the body palms facing the ceiling looking for a nice open chest and close the eyes and this is your time just to maybe reflect on the practice take a little scan of your body is there anything that we are holding on to that we can maybe let go of? And just soften here. So if you're looking for a longer relaxation today, you can just stay here for as long as you'd like or otherwise take the hands outside the knees, gently press the legs together, knees come into the chest, and we're just gonna very gently sit or we'll roll up into a cross-legged position. You can pause here, or just walk the hands forwards a little bit, drop the head, and find a bit more release into the outer hips. Hopefully, nice and open into the hips now, a bit more elsewhere in the body as well. Thank you for joining. Let me know how you get on.